Most people fear reboiling a GPU core because they think one mistake means game over. But today, I'm going to show you how to reboil a GPU core efficiently, safely, and without errors. By the end of this video, you'll see that it's not about luck, it's about the method. Reboiling a GPU core is one of the most critical skills in graphics card repairs. It is the process of replacing every solder ball that connects the GPU die to the PCB. This is necessary when pads lose connection, when the core has been overheated or after repeated thermal cycles. Many technicians avoid it because they are worried about alignment or pad damage. But once you understand the process, it becomes a reliable, repeatable repair method. In this video, I'll break it down step by step, showing the little details no one usually talks about and the tricks that make reboiling far less intimidating. The main fear with reboiling comes down to three things. What if I lift or damage a pad? What if the balls don't align correctly? What if the solder bridges and the core won't sit? These are real concerns, but each one has a solution. The key is preparation, control and knowing how to react if something looks wrong. That's what I'll walk you through in this video. Before we even touch the core, let's talk about the setup. You'll need a stencil, flux, solder balls, a preheater, a hot air station, a rework station and a microscope. But tools alone aren't enough. How you use them is what matters. Here are a few things that makes all the difference. Don't overload with flux. Too much makes balls float. Too little causes uneven spread. Always use a preheater to bring the board to temperature. If you only use heat from the top, you risk wrapping or uneven bonding. Keep both the stencil and the stencil holder clean. Even a tiny obstruction means uneven balls, which leads to wasted time later. Preparation is where you eliminate 80% of mistakes. The original solder on the GPU core is unleaded solder, which has a higher melting point. The first step is to apply flux and remove the excess unleaded solder from the core. After that, Tin the pads with leaded solder. This reduces the melting temperature and makes the process more manageable. Once tinned, use solder wick to remove the solder from the pads of the core. During this step, it's important not to apply pressure with the soldering iron or wick, as this can damage or lift the pads. The objective is to ensure that all pads are flat, shiny and even leaving a perfect prepared surface for reboiling. Before applying flux, make sure the surface of the core is completely clean. Use isopropyl alcohol to wipe the surface so there is no residues left behind. Once cleaned, apply a thin layer of flux. When applying flux with a brush, make it thin by wiping off the excess flux from the brush and moving it over the core surface several times. The goal is to achieve an even thin application across the entire surface. Too much flux will cause issues later. Next, prepare the stencil. Ensure that the stencil itself is clean and free from any solder balls stuck to it. Also check the stencil holder. A clean stencil holder prevents gaps where extra balls could slip in, which helps guarantee uniform results during the reboiling process. Once the flux has been applied and the stencil is secured, it's time to place the solder balls. Pour the solder balls over the stencil and gently shake the holder. This light movement allows the balls to naturally drop into and populate the stencil holes without forcing them in. After all the holes are filled, carefully pour off the excess solder balls and return them to the bottle. This ensures you only keep the correctly seated balls on the core. 
at this stage, the pads should each have a single solder ball sitting in the stencil. A quick visual check under the microscope will confirm that every pad has been populated evenly before heating. After confirming all the stencil holes are populated, carefully lift the stencil straight up to avoid disturbing the balls. At this point, the solder balls are resting on the flux coated pads on the GPU core. There are many instances where some balls get stuck to the stencil instead of sitting on the core pads. In such cases, carefully place the missing balls onto the corresponding pads before moving forward. Now, carefully remove the core from the stencil holder and place it on a preheater. My preheater can go over 200 degrees Celsius, but I set it to 200. I wait until the flux activates and the temperature on the preheater reaches 200. At this stage, you'll actually see some balls already starting to fall into place on the pads. Now, with the hot air station set at 260 degrees Celsius and the airflow at 0%, Gently heat the surface of the core until you see all the solder balls sticking to the pads. At this stage, it's not necessary for every ball to be perfectly straight. Turn off the preheater and as the temperature begins to drop, flood the core with flux until the entire surface is covered. Then, turn the preheater back on and wait until it reaches 200 degrees Celsius again. Once the flux is active, pass the hot air over the surface a second time. Now you'll see the solder balls moving into place and straightening out. At this point, ensure that every ball is aligned properly and sitting evenly on the pads. This gives you a clean, uniform finish that's ready for installation. Once all the solder balls have been seated and aligned, the next step is to remove the excess flux. When we flooded the core earlier, a large amount of flux remains on the surface. There are two common ways to clean it. One, using isopropyl alcohol with a brush. And two, in an ultrasonic cleaner. I prefer the isopropyl alcohol method with a brush. It not only cleans away all the flux, but also helps expose any solder balls that isn't making proper contact. If a ball is weakly attached, it also falls off during cleaning. This is actually a good thing because it reveals the issue before the core is installed back on the PCB. The goal after this step is to have a completely clean GPU core with a uniform grid of balls, all evenly aligned and securely bonded to their pads. With the GPU core successfully reboiled and cleaned, the next stage is installing it back onto the PCB. This step is just as crucial as the reboiling process because even a perfectly reboiled core can fail if it's not aligned and seated properly. The PCB needs the same attention as the core. Start by applying flux to the pad area and removing the excess unleaded solder. Then, tin the pads with leaded solder to reduce the melting temperature. Once thin, use solder wick to clean the pads until they are flat and shiny. As with the core, avoid applying pressure during wicking to prevent pad damage. When finished, the PCB surface should be completely smooth with an even layer across all pads. Finally, clean the area thoroughly with isopropyl alcohol to remove any flux residue. Before placing the core, apply a thin, even layer of flux on both the PCB pad area and the balls on the GPU core. This dual application ensures even wetting and helps the solder flow cleanly during reflow. Now, carefully align the GPU core over the PCB. I always use the corner alignment markers on the die of the PCB as my guide. Gently lower the core into position and make sure it sits flat without rocking. Both the preheating and the top heating process are handled by my three-zone rework station. This system takes care of controlled heating across all zones.
ensuring the PCB and the core are brought up to temperature evenly. Each board has a different thickness, so it's important to calibrate your rework station for the exact board you're working on. I have a dedicated video on my channel that shows how to set up and calibrate your three zone rework station properly. During the reflow process, I use a camera to capture the solder balls as they settle into place. Surface tension naturally pulls the core into perfect alignment with the PCB pads. Once reflow is complete, I observe the core under the microscope to ensure that the alignment is correct and that there are no issues before moving forward. After the PCB and the core have cooled, I first clean away all the remaining flux using isopropyl alcohol and a brush. Then I test the board for resistance to ensure there are no shots. After that, I check the voltages using my custom power supply which is limited to 3 amps of current. This allows me to safely confirm that all the power rails are up and functioning before moving to the full system testing. Once the resistance and voltage checks are complete, the next step is to test the GPU on the bench. I install the PCB on my test bench setup and power it on to check if the card displays an image. If the installation was done correctly and all the solder balls are making proper contact, the GPU should post successfully and display the initial image output. This first display check is one of the most important indicator that the reballing and installation was successful. So that's how you reball a GPU core efficiently and without errors. From preparing the core and PCB to carefully placing the balls to installing the GPU back onto the board. Every step matters. If your process is correct, the GPU will post as soon as it's installed on the test bench. That's the confirmation your reballing was successful. But remember, what I've shown here takes practice. You won't get it perfect the first time, and that's normal. Only with repeated practice over time, you'll start to get the installation right every single time. The key is patience and practice. If you found this breakdown useful, hit the like button, share it with others who might find it helpful, and subscribe for more advanced GPU repair videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye for now. Cheers.